Hello everyone and welcome to this screencast number four about biodiversity data publishing. In the last screencast, we have published a metadata only data set, a data set that contains no actual biodiversity data. Now we'll go one step further and we will add some real biodiversity data to this, to this resource. Let's go. We need two things to perform this data publication. We need, of course, access to, to the IPT. Uh, here is the, the IPT instance we used previously to, to publish our metadata in the, in the last screencasts. And we need some biodiversity data to, to publish. So I have obtained uh, such data in an Excel sheet and I suggest that we, that we review it, uh, quickly together. Um, if I if I look at this um, this Excel sheet, I can see we have uh, several uh, columns with a title each time, and we also have a large number of rows. Uh, let's check. Yep, in this case we have five thousand rows. Um, let's check the kind of data we have in each. Um, in each column, so we are a bit more familiar with our data. Um, I have an identifier, like a unique, unique number, collection code, uh, the code of some institution, another identifier, um, information about life stage, about associated taxa, like for example, you, you see that there's a specimen and Plant specimen and there's a, another known insect on it. We have a date, some field notes, some location information like country code, um, locality or city name, latitude, longitude, uh, an earth certainty about this lat long, and also some taxonomic information. Uh, the name of someone who made an identification, a scientific name, uh, the kingdom, phylum, class, order, uh, family and also, for example, a taxonomic status. So, to me, if we if we go back to the to the first screencast about uh, GBIF data publication, this looks exactly like uh, occurrences. Uh, it seems we are describing the occurrence of an individual organism. Uh, we have an identification for this organism. We have a location of where uh, where that happened. Uh, we have a date. Uh, so that really looks like uh, an occurrence. So we will, we know that we will have to publish an occurrence uh, datasets. Okay, back to my IPT instance. And if I go on the manage resource tab, I can, I can find uh, my Belgian coccinelli data dataset, the one we created before. And what I want to do is to, to edit that one. To, to add the, the data from my Excel sheet. So I will click on it to, to change it. And we are back to this uh, main data store resource management page that we, we've seen before. Um, and um, the first thing I'll do is to change the dataset type because currently it's a metadata only dataset. And we have discovered that we, it will actually become uh, an occurrence uh, dataset. So I go on the metadata settings. And here on the basic metadata page in the first section, I have a type where I can configure the dataset type, which is currently metadata only. I will select that it's an occurrence. And now I can save my metadata to keep the, the change. And it's saved. Let's go back again to the main uh, resource configuration page. And here, after I made this change, in fact, um, you, you can notice that new, new options appeared because there is now a source data block here and another one called Darwin core mapping. And 
those uh, those two sections are there to to configure the the data itself so they were not that's why they were not needed for a metadata only data set but but now they are and we will uh, we will configure them um the first one is called source data and it's basically to tell the ipt uh, where uh, it can find your your data so here in an excel sheet and the second one darwin core mapping uh, will tell the IPT how to interpret and how to understand the data in this uh, in this Excel sheet itself. So first, we we connect the file. I will click on the Choose File button here in Source Data, and I will uh, I will select my data file, uh, the Excel sheet we just we just saw before. It's called Ladybird. Click the open, and then I have to click uh, a second time on a button called add. The file is transferring to the IPT. And now I am on a new, new configuration page. And you can configure different settings related to your source data file. And you can also uh, have a quick preview to, to check if those settings are, are reasonable. So here, a first one, which is quite interesting, is the number of header rows. Let's have a look again on the Excel sheet. And we can see that is on this sheet, the first, the first row is not actual data, but is, is column titles or, or headers for those, for those columns. So this file actually contain one line. The first one, uh, the first line is, is headers and the IPT is configured for zero header rows, which isn't correct, of course. So I will just put the value one here. Um, I have another interesting settings, which is the selected worksheet, because in Excel you can have uh, different sheets containing data, and when you connect it to the IPT, you have to tell the IPT in which your data uh, should be loaded. But here uh, we have only uh, one sheet, so so it should be good. Um, we've configured the number of header the worksheet uh, so it's time to have a look if the if the ipt understand our file uh, correctly so i click first on the analyze button and then on the little i that will uh, that will uh, display a preview of the results i can see that my header are well uh, recognized here at the top of the table and I can see the data itself seems uh, seems correctly discovered. For example, they are well aligned under scientific name. I can see that I have a plausible scientific name and I have uh, something that looks like coordinates uh, under the lat, lon columns. So the data um, source seems well configured for me. Uh, I will now click on the save button to um, save this configuration and now i am back again on the main resource configuration page and there's only uh, one uh, thing to configure and it's happening here in the darwin core mapping uh, section the idea behind the mapping step is to make an association or a link if you want between the way you name things in your database in your data source and uh, in the Darwin Core standard. Let's take an example. Maybe uh, if you're working in a French institute, your scientific names are kept in a column uh, called non scientific in French. But if you look into the Darwin Core standard, the scientific name should be, should be under a scientific name with a specific spelling term. And so we have to tell the IPT uh, what's the connection between those, those two things. And only after it's done, it will be able to deal with our custom format and at the same time to, to harmonize it, to make it work with other datasets from other sources. 
The first uh, thing we have to do here is to select the subtype of Darwin Core we want to map our data to. Uh, we have Darwin Core occurrence, taxon, or event, and basically those three types correspond to to the different uh, type of data sets you want to publish. Here we want to publish uh, occurrence data, so we will simply select Darwin Core occurrence and click on the Add button. On this page, we can now uh, select which source of data will be mapped to, to our occurrence score. Uh, we only have one source of data so far. It's the Ladybirds file. So we will let the selection and click Save again. And now we are on the main uh, mapping page. We have a very long list of all the available Darwin Core terms here. And as this list is very long, they are grouped by, by section. For example, uh, I have a shortcut here on the left called location. If I click on it, I directly jump to the various location related uh, Darwin Core fields. I can see here water body, island, country, for example, uh, those, those kind of things. Um, there's also some help embedded. For example, here I have the decimal latitude field and just uh, on the left, there is an information uh, symbol. If I click on it, I will have some help uh, describing what's expected in this in this field and also an example here and basically um, it says we should put uh, under this term the geographic latitude in uh, in decimal uh, degrees uh, right to the to the Darwin core term I have a selection list and basically if we open this selection list, we'll see the list of our columns in our, uh, in our Excel uh, sheet. And that's how we do the mapping, actually, because that uh, definition of decimal latitude seems to, to match perfectly uh, what's inside our lat column here. We can see that it's, it's visibly some uh, decimal latitude. So by in the IPT, by going to the decimal latitude field and selecting the lat uh, column in the in the selection box we will just say to the apt your decimal latitude term will take a source in our lat column and that's it we just mapped our first field uh as we are here, I can already see that the next one is decimal longitude with a very similar uh, definition, but for the longitude, of course. And I can see a uh, long field with the longitude in my, uh, in my source file. So I can map it just the same and say decimal longitude is coming from the long uh, column. So I mapped um, two fields now, and I have here uh, at the bottom a save button. I will click it just to ensure that my uh, my uh, first my two first fields are already mapped. That's just what we do when we when we're doing the mapping, taking each um, field in our source file finding the the matching uh, Darwin core term and, and connecting the two using the, the list box. Now I will um, show you a few more things. Um, here, for example, the IPT uh, has a warning message saying basis of record is, uh, is required. And in fact, uh, basis of the record is one of those Darwin core terms here. And it's a, it's a mandatory field. So for each occurrence data set, you, you have to configure uh, the basis of record. 
If we check at the definition, it's basically the nature of the data record. Is it, a, for example, a fossil? Is it a living specimen observed? Is it a, is it a preserved specimen or, um, or something like that? But here I, I have a problem. My problem is if I, if I check in my, uh, in my fields, in my Excel, I don't really have, uh, this information. I know that all the data consists of human observation, but it's not in the, um, it's not in the Excel sheet because it's a common value for, for all the, all the different rows, not, uh, not in the source file. So here I have another option of the APT. I will not use the first list box, which is about selecting a column in the source file, but I will use the second one. And the second one is used for exactly for that. It's used to force a value for all rows. So here I can select human observation. And that means that in my published data, all fields will have human observation as basis of record, even if that initial data uh, was not in my uh, Excel sheet. Let's save that. The warning message disappeared because now I am providing a value uh, as expected. Another thing I want to show you is uh, at the very bottom of the page, uh, we have a section called unmapped columns. And that's basically the IPT telling us that there are some data in our, in our source file, uh, which is not mapped. And if it's not mapped, that data will not be published. So there are two cases here. Maybe it's something we want. We've deliberately chosen to not publish the data in Identificator. It's a perfectly valid case. When you upload a file to the APT, you don't have to publish every column. You can filter simply by doing that, by avoiding mapping a different columns. But maybe it's also because maybe you want to publish this column and it's just uh, something you've forgotten. So in that case, you have this reminder telling you don't forget to map this identificator uh, column, for example. Um, one more thing again. Uh, we have mapped uh, only two columns uh, manually previously, but the APT told us that uh, unmapped columns, there are only two unmapped columns, which seems a bit strange, but it's not. Let me show you. Um, for example, here I have a Darwin core term called a kingdom. But in my, in my source Excel file, I also have a column uh, called a kingdom with just the same spelling as the Darwin core standard. And in that case, uh, the APT has a feature called auto mapping. And we can see that indeed, it's already uh, automatically selected the kingdom column to match the kingdom Darwin core term. Uh, that's something quite useful because if you upload to the IPT uh, an Excel file with all column names already as Darwin core, you don't have to do anything at the mapping stage because the auto mapping feature will, uh, will do that and will map uh, each field. Um, so we saw different things here. We saw how to manually map a few fields like uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, we saw also how to use the auto mapping so we don't have to do anything if the, the column names are already Darwin core. And we also saw how to force a value uh, for basis of record that was not in uh, in the initial source file. So that's really the basics of, uh, of the mapping. And, uh, we can, we can say that, uh, no, this, uh, this mapping is, uh, is done for this data set. I will click save again, just to be sure. I will go back, uh, one more time to the, uh, data set management page. 
if it is a bit slow. And we can check that we now have some source data. We have connected the Excel sheet. We have added a mapping between this Excel sheet and Darwin core occurrence. We still have the resource metadata uh, that were entered in the previous screencast. So what we can uh, simply do is do again the, the publish cycle. So we will first click publish to create a new, uh, a new version of the resource in the APT. I have some messages. And they have a success message saying published version 1.2 of Belgian Ladybirds finished. So we can uh, go back to the resource page. And we check, but it's still, uh, it's still uh, public and registered because we did that in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, screencast. So no, our data set is republished. And not only with the metadata, but also with uh, occurrence data uh, attached. So thank you.